It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. Are we good? Good morning, everybody. I am Vicki from the city of Westfield, and I am here with our streets superintendent, Travis Stetnish. And today, it is Winter Weather Awareness Week here in Westfield, so we are talking to the man behind all of the street cleaning gizmos and people and all this, that, and the other. Travis is here, and we've asked you all to give us some questions throughout the week, and we do have some, but first, I'm gonna ask a question. So Travis, tell us a little bit, how would you characterize this winter weather season so far? Good, bad, challenging? Uh, to me, it seems a little early. Um, typically, this is something we'll experience late December or early January, but it seems like temperatures have fallen, precipitation, ice, all that has seemed to happen a little bit earlier this year. Ooh, so is that particularly challenging? Are we good with that? It's just, it's a big guessing game. Um, we've got a phenomenal street crew, and those guys are willing to come in anytime we desire uh, to keep the road safe. And so a lot of their time is spent watching the roadways and seeing, being prepared if something was to happen. Okay, and so also if you guys have questions, feel free to click them or input them right there on the Facebook Live and we will answer them. We have had a few questions already uh, submitted this week. So Travis, this is 10 minutes with you, okay. not with me. So we're gonna go ahead and ask the first question from Anthony, thank you Anthony. How many inches of snow need to fall for neighborhood streets to be plowed? Per our policy, it states three inches of snowfall. Now, that being the case, there is a lot of different variables or situations that can present where we will do a full push uh, ahead of that three inch mark. Uh, I'll look at the extended forecast. If it's gonna be you know, below freezing for a, a, a huge amount of time and traffic will pack that, you know, say two inches down and become pack ice, we will go ahead and pull that trigger um, at a little bit lower rate, um, but it really just depends. <laughs> it really just depends on the event and the situation we're dealing with. Okay, so maybe explain to folks what is a full push. Okay, a full push is where myself as well as some of my colleagues will assess the roads, uh, more or less the subdivisions, to determine whether we need to do a full push, which a full push is where we will contact our contractors and they will come out and they will plow all of the subdivision streets, and then after they're done plowing, we will go through and salt. Okay, so that's kind of when we have a, a decent amount of snow when even neighborhoods and this, that, and the other mm -hmm. could be. So right now, like this morning, it's kind of icy, wet, not much snow. How do you guys react to that? Because those, at least as a you know motorist, which most of us are, to me those are the worst times because you're not 100% sure what is what and if it's ice or if it's rain or if it's melted or if it's you know, gross out. So right. tell us, what, how do you handle today? Well, today we have a great relationship with um, our public safety folks. Uh, police department help us out significantly this time of year because their night shift is already out and about. So I will typically send out an email letting them know, hey guys, we're not on shift tonight, we're not doing anything. So if you guys see any road conditions or anything like that, please let us know. Um, but for instance, we were pretty sure there'd be some slick spots because of the amount of precipitation we had yesterday. So I had our night shift foreman come in at 4 a.m knowing that he probably wouldn't have to do much, but as you could heard the dump truck, uh, he's been out um, just uh, prowling the roads, checking for any slick spots or anything like that and salting as necessary. So talk to us a little bit. So we've got this big snow mover dump truck thing. Tell me about how much in terms of how many vehicles do we have that, you know, when we are going gangbusters, let's go out and plow these roads. How many um, vehicles do we have that we can go service the people of Westfield? Okay, well we have five dump trucks like you see here, um, which obviously they're carrying a large amount of salt, the enormous plow on the front, um, we have five of those, then we have about 11 um, pickups, and then we have two what we refer to as mini dumps, they are 5500 dump trucks that have smaller uh, dump beds on them that obviously can plow in salt, which obviously help us out quite a bit in the downtown area as well as subdivisions. Okay. So when we talk about the process, we've been communicating out this week about the process. Um, I'm not gonna date myself, but back in the day when I was younger, a new driver, uh, it was just all salt. Talk about how you guys approach it nowadays. Well now, um, as of last year, we started making brine and applying brine, which basically brine is, is basically salt water. Um, we mix a basically a coarse white rock salt with water and one of our fancy uh, brine machine maker and basically what it does is we have a storage tank which stores it we've got 1800 gallon tanks that go in the bed of these trucks um, they're not in there now because they're uh, mobile where we can put them in and take them out 
um, makes us more efficient. Um, one truck can do two different jobs. Um, but basically, we can go out um, two and sometimes with dry conditions, even three days ahead of an event and brine everything. For instance, we've known about this little you know, dusting to an inch, maybe a couple inches, whatever, whatever we may see today. We've known about that for a while. So we started on Tuesday brining everything. So all of our primary streets have been, <clears throat> excuse me, have been brined. Um, so it just gives us, basically when you brine it, it gives it a protective layer where instead of getting the, the pack ice that basically, you know, is just ice on, that just forms to the asphalt that makes it really hard to peel up, it gives a protective layer in between the two, between the ice and the asphalt. That way when you come through with the dump truck, you can peel it right up. Okay, so Keith kind of had a statement or a question, depends how you look at it. Keith said, please use sand. The salt eats airlines on trucks and bodies on cars. So, as a motorist, how, what would you say to folks who might have that concern? Now, this is my opinion um, on salt, or I'm sorry, on sand, is, you know, sand is something that it doesn't actually have a melting factor to it. Um, salt has chemicals in it that allows the ice to melt. Sand is something that will just lay on top of the ice and give you grit to get from point A to point B. So what's actually doing the melting in that situation is just the vehicle uh, tires that have warmed up and they're melting the ice. And then the other thing is our stormwater system. Anywhere where there's a curb, if you, you know, as most people see, we have street sweeper that sweeps on every street at least once a year. And um, you'll see a lot of sediment that builds up in those gutter pans. If you were to saw sand, all that sand would eventually work its way to that gutter pan and then it would just pile up in there and then freeze and it would just, be, it would create uh -huh. havoc. Okay, so if I am concerned about my airlines and on the body of my car, should I just wash it even more this time of year? Would that help or what? Yes, what that would I? help. Um, underbody washes and as you guys can tell these trucks, um, this was out yesterday and they get, we have a little mini fire hose out back that we spray them down with. Anytime these trucks go out for an event, they get washed thoroughly all the way through. Okay, so it's just, you know, probably no great answer, but at least, you right. know, we want to keep the roads, you know, passable, so. Mm -hmm. Safe. Brian, safe. 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 Right. Not just passable, but exactly. safe. Um, okay, now somebody, Mike, said yesterday we missed 156th Street between Spring Mill and Oak Ridge. Mike, I don't think we did, but Travis does say sometimes there are so many variables, because I did ask him about that location. There are a lot of variables that go into this. So we do our best, but talk about those variables. Well, basically, uh, tree lines, um, if you don't have sunlight that can hit, heat up the asphalt, you know, that will cause a certain area to be worse than others. Um, traffic is actually something that can be your best friend or your worst enemy on a snow event. Um, for instance, if you have a road treated and it's been plowed and then you've salted it, you want traffic on it because that will um, pulverize that salt into the asphalt or not on top of the asphalt it warms up that asphalt temperature and will help you melt um, versus if you have a road that's out you know where there's not a lot of traffic you could plow it and then salt it and if it's cold enough that salt can just sit on top of the ice because there's not enough traffic to help assist pushing that salt down into the ice okay um, any questions out there feel free to just put them in put them if not we're running to the end of our 10 minutes with Travis so I will ask him maybe the last question, we'll see. Um, what is it like for you and your team this time of year? And, and what do you think of these guys? I mean, honestly, in the last few weeks, guys getting up at one in the morning, coming in, and then, you know, kind of putting their lives on hold a little bit. Tell me a little bit about how your guys' approach to this season. Well, first and foremost, I can't say enough good things about my crew. Um, they are the type of guys where, you know, you say, hey guys, we gotta do this. They're like, okay, what time do you want me in? Um, and a lot of these guys, when they have to come in at one o'clock, a lot of times there's not a lot of heads up. As in like, we'll call them at midnight saying, hey man, we really need you to come in at one o'clock. Um, now typically we really strive to get the guys home so they can get, you know, try to get some sleep. But as you can imagine, you know, if you're coming in at one o'clock, you're already amped up because you're gonna be up all night. It's kind of hard to get to sleep. But now these guys, I just can't say enough good things about them because they're very um, available. They're, they're willing to do anything I need them to. Um, and we've got a great uh, team, and that's, that allow, makes things a little bit easier for me. That's awesome. I mean, and I think the underlying thing is that, you know, we're all here to serve the people in Westfield, and we want our roads to be safe. Is it foolproof? Probably not, but no. we do very well. I drive on lots of other roads every day, and I must admit, Westfield does a very good job. So 
thank you to you and your crew, sure. and thank you for the, the 10 minutes with Travis. We can do this all the time. He's always got a lot to say. So mm -hmm. if you have more questions, feel free to post them online or tweet us or whatever. Travel Westfield is our new Twitter handle. Um, communicate with us, and we'll communicate back at you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.